Hello my friends, in this video I'm going to be sharing the 7 things I wish I knew as a beginner musician. I'm going to be talking about how to choose your teachers, how to practice effectively, but also more subtle things like ego and imposter syndrome. My name's Amir, and this is How To Music. Now let me start off by saying that I don't have it all figured out. None of us do, just ask any musician. Music is a constant learning process, and that's one of the reasons why I love it so much. So all that this is is just an ode to my amazing teachers and also a retrospective of the best lessons that I've learned so far. Let's get into it. One, practice doesn't make perfect. This is single-handedly the biggest misconception about practice. Many people think that it's all about the sheer volume of practice. It's about the hours that you put in. It's about that Sigma grind set, baby. And of course, there's a time and place for that. But the problem is, if you're practicing with improper form, all that you're doing is ingraining a mistake. So practice doesn't actually make perfect. Instead, practice makes permanent. And when we approach it with this new paradigm, our focus and our priority becomes form and intention. I learned this lesson from my high school band teacher, Mr. Francis, what up? And when I first heard it, it fundamentally changed the way that I approached practice. I used to just sit down at a piano and mindlessly run scales up and down, maybe add in a song and then I'd call it a day. But now when I practice, every repetition has an intention. Can I play it softer? Can I play it with more expression? There's no more blindly fumbling through a piece. Simply put, instead of playing fast and sloppy, perfect it slowly, and then speed it up from there. And while we're on the topic of speed, two, faster doesn't mean better. In all honesty, this was probably the hardest for me to realize. I really enjoyed playing bombastic, loud, and fast, not because it made me sound good, but because I was compensating. Hard. But what I've learned at the ripe old age of 21 is that just because you can play it loud and fast doesn't mean you should. What matters more is serving the music and connecting with the audience. Hey all, Future Amir coming in here just to clarify a few things. I think context is incredibly important and you need to understand who you're playing for. For example, if you're just playing for average run of the mill listeners, they're not gonna understand the crazy poly chords that you're playing and the super ultra mega meta hyper Lydian skill, and right, don't expect them to. But on the other hand, if you're playing for other musicians, yourself included, then of course, rip with me and solo over Donnelly. That's what we're here for, you know, have fun with the music. I think at the end of the day, being able to know your audience and adapt accordingly is a bigger flex than just being able to play fast. Three, not everything can be self-taught. When I was 15, I taught myself how to play guitar so I could impress a girl. I borrowed my friend's guitar, watched a whole bunch of YouTube tutorials, and then sang to her the next day. But would I say that was the most efficient or effective way to learn? Hell no. There's so many gaps in my technique and bad habits that I need to now unlearn. I nearly gave myself tendinitis because of poor technique. And in hindsight, I would have much rather just paid someone to teach me proper technique from the start. So while YouTube is a wonderful tool in the short term, over the long run, it's no substitute for experience and guidance. Which is why it's important to, four, choose the right teachers. Looking back, my biggest regret as an artist and musician was not investing more time and money into finding the best possible instruction. And while I think that's, you know, part and parcel due to the fact that money was always tight growing up, but I think it's also because I didn't know better. I thought that I could just teach myself everything from YouTube. Nowadays though, I'm correcting that. At the moment, I have four incredible teachers that I sought out on my own volition. I have one for classical piano, one for jazz piano, one for music production, and one for singing. And while it's definitely expensive and my wallet is crying, it's a worthwhile investment that I've never regretted. As a student, your teacher's limitations become your limitations. And that's why it's important to set the bar high and cast the net wide. Five, always record your lessons. Why get just the hour when you can have the lesson every day? It makes the money go farther anyways. And when it comes to recording notes, I personally use Otter. Now I'm not sponsored to say this, but it's a free app that basically transcribes your notes in real time. When I discover it, my mind was like, Pfft, mind blown. It is such a good app. Go and download, it's free. Six, you're always going to feel like an imposter no matter how good you get. The good news though is that literally every single artist that I have ever met feels that way, from the Grammy Award winners all the way to the beginners. So the feeling is always going to be there, but so is the choice to create in spite of it. And lastly, number seven, make music to serve music. Now this one's specifically for the singers, but it can apply to everyone. A vocal athlete and an artist are two fundamentally different things, and the difference is who their music serves. 
An artist makes music to serve music with a capital M. They create and they sing to share their gift with others and to connect people. The vocal athlete, on the other hand, makes music to serve themselves. They sing to satisfy their ego's need for validation and vanity. Now, I'm not saying that vocal athleticism is a bad thing. I love riffing and belting, sometimes a little too much. And neither am I saying that the two of them are mutually exclusive. It's a spectrum and they both can coexist. I mean, just look at Yeba. What I am saying is that intention matters. And as singers, we have a choice. Will we sing to be impressive or will we sing to be impactful? And those right there are my seven lessons. I actually have 14 more that I'm gonna be sharing over the next two weeks, so make sure you stay tuned for that. How to Music is a new series. This is episode one. I'm really excited to continue it. If you have any ideas for topics or any questions that you'd like to see me answer, drop it in the comments below. I'm gonna do my best to answer every single one. I wanna provide as much value as possible. Until next time, peace and love. Yeah.